I have written a program to solve puzzles in the Floodfield puzzle games Kami and Kami 2. What are those Kami games, how much computational power did it take and what does it have to do with graphs in this video? Let's go! Kami and Kami 2 both were developed by the company called State of Play. All of their games look like very beautiful handmade art objects and Kami and Kami 2 are no exceptions. Besides, it's an interesting puzzle game with interesting puzzle mechanics and remarkably hard puzzles. As for where you can play these games, Kami can be played on Windows through Steam and Kami 2 is available as an app for iOS and Android. So for playing Kami 2 I had to use an Android emulator. First, let's briefly look at game's mechanics. You have a field of colored tiles that form some sort of shape or image. In the case of Kami, tiles are arranged into a square grid. With Kami 2, it's a grid of triangles. Your goal is to paint all the tiles on the board in the same one color. And to do that, you can flood fill any region with any color. Bordering regions of the same color would merge together and act as a new region. You also have a limit on the number of moves you can make to reach the goal. If you run out of moves, you fail. If you made the puzzle one color in that number of moves, you win. Quite simple, but let me tell you, deceptively simple. Anyway, if you haven't played it, I highly recommend you doing so. Also, Kami 2 is free in the App Store, so you're not risking anything. Real eye candy plus great puzzles and I probably should stop right there as it starts to sound like a promotional video for the game, which this video is not. We are here to destroy it with the power of Python. So let's try and do exactly that. First thing, getting the data in. Luckily, turns out Kami1 stores all the source data for puzzles right there in the local files in a form of XML file. With all the values and all the cells for all the puzzles. With all the solutions, I might add, but I wasn't interested in the solution. In case of Kami2, there was no source XML file, so I did have to program reading the screenshots after all. It was somewhat tricky to figure out coordinates of that hexagonal triangular grid, but that was done, and here is what the program actually sees when it looks at those puzzles. So the puzzle data is in, now how exactly would you go about solving a puzzle like that? What exactly should you put in the program? Now think about it, we can think of an abstraction level where a region is just a dot. Then, some of these regions have shared borders with other regions. It can be represented by a connecting line. You probably have guessed where I'm going with this. Points, aka nodes, connections, aka links. It's a graph. This is actually where the difference between Kami and Kami 2 ceases to exist. This is what such graphs would look like for a few levels in the game. But now what? Which node to click? Which color to change it to? Let's start with what we always start with. Plain, simple, brute forcing. Let's click all of the nodes, change them into all available colors and just keep repeating the process until the graph is reduced to exactly one node. And this strategy works quite well, but only for very basic tutorial puzzles, like those you have on the first couple of screens of Kami 2. Consider this, how many potential combinations or game states, to use the proper term, how many of them we will need to look through to get to the solution? For the level number one, two game states, and both are solutions, by the way. For the level number two, four for the first move, two for the second one, six in total. Level number five has a total of 21. Level number six, 143. Level number 12. It gets a bit tedious to count them all, but here it's somewhere just over a thousand. Level number 18 and this one, well, I don't know for sure how many there are, but with 25 nodes to start with, 5 moves to go, 3 colors to choose from for each move, I'd say it must be somewhere between a million and two. The reason it gets out of hand so fast is the branching factor. This is what causes the combinatorial explosion. For a puzzle like this, 
there can be 50 to 100 options stemming out of every game state. It's quite a lot already if the puzzle have 4 or 5 step solution and it's getting unfeasible when the number of steps reaches 6, 7 or more. Also, as you need to store all the generated game states for future moves, that will start eating at your memory pretty quickly once you start having millions of game states to save. And most importantly, this is just puzzle number 18 out of 108. It's going to get much more complex very, very soon. As always, the solution to that is pruning. In our case, it means following up only on variations you deem possible to lead to success. How can we know if it leads to success? Well, we don't for sure, but there are a couple of reasonable assumptions we can make. Since the final goal is the graph with only one node, the closer we get to it, the better. That is, let's keep smaller graphs, meaning with fewer nodes and fewer links, so let's keep them for the next step and discard larger ones. Also, the less color we have left, the better. Only best, say, 500 will make it to the next round. For those who made it through, we again do all possible permutations of cells and colors and again see through results, keeping only the most successful for the next round. And this works great until you encounter a puzzle like this. Using moves that lead to a shortest graph or least colors will not get you to the solution here. Let's say you need to go for the smallest number of regions of the least numerous color. Here, the winning move is the one resulting in only one region of green, meaning we'll be eliminating green in the next step. And it is with this algorithm I went through all the puzzles of Kami 1. Here are the results. All but one puzzle were solved. This one <clears throat> remained the final bastion that stood even when I threw more and more computation time at it. Speaking of computation time, it went from mere seconds for the most puzzles of the game to minutes and finally to about 40 minutes for the final puzzle. This one. And by the way, I also found a few unintended solutions that were better than game developers originally asked for. Now was the time to deal with Kami 2. For Kami 2, this approach took me through the better part of the game when I stumbled upon what may seem like a deliberate protection against, if not mocking of, brute forcing. Just look at these puzzles. They are stuffed to the brim with almost identical one-cell regions and the amount of computations immediately clogs up the algorithm. So, after a bit of thinking, this is what I did for the next optimization step. Looking at how the program solved previous puzzles, I kept seeing solutions where all the clicks were made on the same one region in the whole puzzle. Maybe it's a thing, I thought. Maybe you can solve the puzzle by clicking on the same node over and over again, you just need to pick the right colors. If so, you can greatly limit the number of nodes to use for generating new combinations, which in turn will greatly reduce the amount of needed computation power. But which nodes should I keep and which to discard? Intuitively, it feels like it should be nodes somewhere in the middle of the graph. For any two nodes in a graph, we can calculate a distance a minimum number of jumps you need to make to get from one node to another. And by the way, to calculate it, you use almost the same algorithm that GPS navigators use to plan your route from point A to point B. So nodes in the center will be those that have minimum distance to any other node in the graph. It does take a few seconds to run this calculation, especially for bigger graphs. It could be quite a few seconds, really. But it is totally worth it, as by having only a few nodes to work with, we are greatly reducing the amount of combinations to go through. Using this approach, I was able to push through those brute force resistant levels of the game. I tried to solve a few user-created levels too, I even set a couple of records going through them. Finally, I must admit that the final few levels that conclude Kami 2 main campaign remained undefeated by my program. As if intentionally, they are designed in exactly the way that troubles the solver, they have a big enough number of regions and big enough number of moves to stop brute forcing, yet at some point you have to click on one of the non-central regions to solve it. And that was the end of the epic struggle I had with Kami 2. Well, Kami 2, you have put up a good fight and it was a great pleasure to almost have beaten you. And this is it for Kami and Kami 2. Now, let's watch the most interesting levels and how the program solved it. 
As usual, you can find a link to the source code in the description to this video, as well as links to Kami and Kami2 games. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe and see you next time. Bye.